How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about the call between President Donald Trump and Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger that the media are currently going crazy over. I'm talking about they're blowing the gasket, they're having the cow, they're doing all this, that, and a third, all of the above. Now, the call was about election voting irregularities, if you will, that happened not only in Georgia, specifically Fulton County, we'll get to that a little bit later, but also all throughout the entire country. There's been all kinds of things that have been happening that just don't seem right, all right? You have a president that allegedly loses the election with all the enthusiasm on his side, all the momentum on his side. You win in Ohio, you win in Florida, you're the incumbent and you lose, it doesn't make any sense. So in the call, he was trying to get to the bottom of it. Now, what the media wanted to focus on is when he said, hey, all we need is 11,779 votes and that'll take us over the top. That's all we need. They want to focus on that to make it appear like Trump was trying to make Brad Raffensperger give him those votes so he win ignoring the context but of course you got to have the narrative be that trump wants to cheat the election all right and when you take away the context that helps to prove the narrative in their mind now before i go any further let's roll a short snippet i've heard the entire hour conversation i'll link to that in the box but right here i'll play a snippet from what's this washington post washington times wherever i'm seeing this particular audio after we get done watching that i'll talk about what was said there then i'll give you my two cents my deep detail analysis and then i'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top so without further ado let's go ahead and roll it we have won this election in georgia based on all of this and there's there's nothing wrong with with saying that brad you know i mean having the having a correct you, the people of georgia are angry and these numbers are going to be repeated on monday night along with others that we're going to have by that time, which are much more substantial even. And the people of Georgia are angry. The people of the country are angry. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. Now, do you think it's possible that they uh, shredded ballots in uh, Fulton County? Because that's what the rumor is. And also that Dominion took out machines, uh, that Dominion is really moving fast to get rid of their uh, machinery. Do you know anything about that? Because that's illegal. No, Ryan Germany. No, Dominion has not um, moved any machinery out of Fulton County. We're having well, but, no, but, but have, they moved, have, they, have they moved the inner parts of the machines and replaced them with other parts? No. You sure, Ryan? I'm sure. You should want to have an accurate election. And you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I no you don't. No, no, you don't. You don't have you don't have not even close. You got you're off by hundreds of thousands of votes. You know what they did and you're not reporting it. That's a you know, that's a criminal that's a criminal offense. And, and, you know, you can't let that happen. That's that's a big risk to you and to Ryan, your lawyer. That's a big risk. But they are shredding ballots, in my opinion, based on what I've heard. And they are removing machinery. Uh, and they're moving it as fast as they can, both of which are criminal fines. And you can't let it happen. And you are letting it happen. Oh, you know, I mean, I'm notifying you that you're letting it happen. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. I think you have to say that you're going to reexamine it, and you can reexamine it, but, but reexamine it with people that want to find answers, not people that don't want to find answers. Uh, for instance, I'm hearing Ryan, and he's probably... I'm sure a great lawyer and everything, but he's making statements about those ballots that he doesn't know. But he's making them with such he, – he did make them with surety, but now I think he's less sure because the answer is they all went to Biden. And that alone wins us the election by a lot, you know. So. 
Mr. President, uh, you have people that submit information, and we have our people that submit information, and then it comes before the court, and the court then has to make a determination. We have to stand by our numbers. We believe our numbers are right. Well, under law, you're not allowed to give faulty election results, okay? You're not allowed to do that, and that's what you've done. This is a faulty election result. And honestly, this should go very fast. You should meet tomorrow because you have a big election election coming up. And because of what you've done to the president, you know, the people of, of uh, Georgia know that this was a scam. And because of what you've done to the president, a lot of people aren't going out to vote. And a lot of Republicans are going to vote negative because they hate what you did to the president. All right. So you saw that. You heard that. Now, this was a big time nothing burger. Trump has been saying the exact same thing that he said in that audio publicly for the past few months. Ever since the election, he said basically that on the night of the election. He's like, hey, come on. This is this is silly. This is crazy. We got to go to court. This ain't right. He's been saying that all throughout this entire time. All right. Now, I think it's pretty slimy and pretty gross that the so-called Republican Brad Roethlisberger would tape that recording and then release it. You're trying to embarrass the president. You're trying to make it seem like he was pressuring you to find some votes that weren't there. No, he's just trying to get you and anyone else that is responsible and anyone else that can assist and get into the bottom of the voting irregularities, not just for Trump, but for the people of Georgia and for the entire United States. People are upset. They know what's going on. They, they're going to the polls and they're saying, um, I can't vote because somebody already voted for me. You get dead people voting. You get all kind of things that are happening. And Trump's trying to get to the bottom of it. And it feels like a lot of times Trump is by himself. There should be a lot of others that are out there fighting for him. And let's not forget how, what the Democratic Party did in 2016. They had no election of voting fraud or voting irregularities or any kind of thing that Trump did wrong. But they spied on this campaign. They did Russia Gate for three years. Then it was Ukraine Gate. Then it was, oh, he's not doing things right. And all kind of leaks and moles and, you know, information just being put out there. All these things that have been happening from the left, right, center, everywhere against Trump to try and get him out of there. And then Trump gets on the call and says the exact same thing he's been saying publicly for the past few months. Then he's trying to, you know, he's trying to cheat the election. They're talking about impeaching them. It's like, really? Impeaching them? <laughs> it's like, all right, it's, it's, it's January the 4th. Your guy, Joe Biden, allegedly will come into office at the end of this month, just in a few days. So why are you trying to impeach a president is on his way out, supposedly? What are you even talking about? This is so dumb. This is what they've been doing throughout this entire time. And I feel like at this point, they are mocking us because they're just doing one last hurrah. It's like symbolic. It's like, all right, we've been trying to get him out of office ever since 2016. We didn't get elected. 2017 when he got inaugurated so let's just do one last time one, one more take one more for me that's kind of what it feels like but i digress the nature of the call was nothing more than what he's been saying publicly and the, the lawyer ryan jeremy typical lawyer nothing against good lawyers out there shout out to y'all but in this case Anytime Trump would ask Brad Roethlisberger a direct question, like let's say, for example, Fulton County, where we know there was some uh, fraud going on, of course, what we've seen on videotape. Trump spoke about that videotape with a lady and her daughter, and then, you know, ballots under the table and, you know, certain things that have been said, certain rumors. He's asking about these things. And then when he would ask some really important questions like, hey, we asked you guys about getting information from Fulton County, but you didn't give it to us. You gave us Kyle County instead. What's going on with that? Roethlisberger would defer to Ryan Germany, the lawyer. And sometimes Ryan Germany would say, oh, no, that's not accurate. That's not right. That's improper. And then other times he'd get the stuttering and stammering when he's answering a question. And I know what that means. Anytime a lawyer is trying to find the right words, they're trying to not answer your question, but answer it at the same time. You understand? So when Trump's asking about the Dominion machines, like, hey, what's going on with the machines? Were some of the machines removed? Like, what's happening with that? Here comes Ryan Germany talking about, oh, no, the machines are removed. But then Trump, he, he's not a dummy. He's been dealing with lawyers and business for a long time. He's like, OK, well, look, uh, the machines might still be there. But how about some of the parts in the machines? Then he's getting a stutter and a stammer. It's like, oh, OK, I see what's going on here. 
Okay, so at, at a certain point in the conversation, Trump knew talking to this lawyer would be ridiculous. He was like, "What's wrong with you, man? Like, I know you, I know you, I know you're a lawyer. It ain't difficult, but come on, like, why are you fighting me against this? Okay, all I need eleven thousand seven hundred seventy nine votes, man. Come on, like, what are we doing? It's not a hard thing to do. Just find the." actual fraud we know it's there investigate it do a real investigation and you'd be able to find the fraud it's right there okay Eleven thousand votes is nothing we have more than enough if you just look if you just investigate and stop trying to fight this all right it's it's not really a big deal but of course they are trying to fight against it now i don't really know why i don't really know what's going on maybe it's possible that in spite of all the enthusiasm all over the state of Georgia, including Atlanta, in spite of all of that, Trump lost. Maybe that's possible. But I think there's quite a bit of evidence out there that would warrant Trump to get on the call with Secretary of State, the lawyer and the lady, whoever that was on the call. It's more than enough for him to get on the call and attempt to get to the bottom of it. Why wouldn't you? If there appears to be that much evidence out there, the left are most certain to go after it. They they be like ravenous dogs going after it. There was zero evidence in the 2016 election that Trump did anything wrong. Yet they went after it, didn't they? They sure did. They sure did. So why shouldn't we? It seems like the left want to do whatever they want to do whenever they want to do it. But then when we try to get to the bottom of a the thing, then they say, oh, you're just you're trying to obscure. You're trying to. Uh, you're trying to suppress the black vote, all kind of retarded stuff. So as I close, I want to say this. The call was a big nothing burger. Trump's been saying the exact same thing for the past few months. And I predict today, now he's, he's in Georgia right now today, matter of fact, in Dalton, not too far from where I'm at right now, just right over the right over the line, really. He will say the exact same thing he said on the call as he had said many times before and, you know, in public, you know, out on in rallies, on television, wherever. This is nothing. This is a big time nothing burger. All it is really, the, the biggest takeaway here, as I close through this time, the biggest takeaway is that the media are trying to convince you that Trump is trying to cheat the election and he's corrupt and he's a bad guy. And they're also trying to muddle in the, in the waters of the election right now. They, they're trying to get into that. They're trying to make it, they're trying to make Loeffler and Purdue be in a bad situation. And Fox News is no different. So any kind of mainstream media you watch, you're going to do the exact same thing. They're going to try to make this whole thing with Trump, figuring out what's going on with the election and irregularities that people are wanting him to investigate. They're wanting him to fight. They're trying to mix that up with Trump being improper and corrupt. And they're linking it to Loeffler and Purdue. When really, it's not even about them specifically. It's about a 2020 presidential election. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? Do you think that Trump has a point about the the fraud and other things that have happened in the 2020 election? They need to be looked at and need to be investigated. Or is he just, you know, uh, quoting conspiracy theories? Oh, I got to add one last thing here. I like when I think Roethlisberger was trying to say, oh, Mr. President, you can't just rely on social media because there's things on there that ain't right. First of all, you're insulting the man like he's not uh, an adult and understands what the Internet is. But beyond that, he's like, look, it's not about social media because social media, that's y'all. That's big tech. So I can't rely on them. I'm relying upon what I see. I'm relying upon what I know, the, the crowd sizes, the enthusiasm, the record level of participation in the Republican Party. I'm looking at that. I'm looking at how I'm the incumbent, how I went to Florida and Ohio. I'm looking at tangible things I can hold in my hand. I can see with my own two eyes. Not um, the social media is controlled by big tech that hates me, that hates anybody that's on the right. But what do you think? Do you think that the call was appropriate, inappropriate? Did he say anything in that call that he has not said publicly before? And how about Brett Roethlisberger? How do you feel about this so-called Republican recording that conversation and then releasing it to the media? How do you feel about that? Is that a way to behave? I feel like if you are a Republican, Democrat, or whatever, if you have in-house business, you handle that in-house, all right? I might disagree with you. It might even be a fist fight. I might get into a fight with my brother, right? We, we can have a fight and then there's problems going on. But 
That does not need to get leaked to the media. That does not need to play out in front of the world. We can handle that behind closed doors. And then if we disagree, then it is what it is. But I'm not going to air out our conversation and just put it out there to the world. Like, for, like what is, what's the point in doing that? You're really interfering with the election. And then I got to figure out, are you really a Republican? You're, you're a Democrat? You're a mole? What's really going on? But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.